Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake forecast video for the month of January for the New Zealand and also the Australian region. This is exclusive content for subscribers of the SolarWatcher.net website. This will be posted on December 26 for subscribers and will be made public on the YouTube channel on December 31st. This is to showcase what is available on the SolarWatcher.net website. We now look at the important astronomical events for the month of January and this is an extremely busy month. Not only do we have on January 4 the Earth reaching perihelion which is its closest approach of its orbit of the Sun but we have Mercury playing a significant role this month. We have Mercury in an alignment with Venus on January 10 and also in alignment with the Sun on January 30. Two important dates to focus on. Now Mercury will reach its greatest elongation on the 14th of January. This is from an Earth perspective. And on January 21st, another important date, Mercury will reach perihelion while the Moon reaches its perigee. Two significant time periods worth noting for the month of January. There are five important planetary alignments taking place in the month of January. January 1, Mars opposes Jupiter. January 3rd, Sun conjoins Pluto. Now these two alignments take place just prior to the Earth reaching perihelion. We should see a significant earthquake during this time frame. Another significant window, January 19 and 20, with two alignments. Venus opposes Jupiter, while Mars conjoins Neptune a day later. And rounding out the month, the Sun will conjoin Mercury on January 30. Now we should see significant periods of seismic activity due to these celestial alignments. As mentioned, the Earth will reach perihelion on January 4, 2015, where it will be 91.4 million miles away from the Sun. Now this is the Earth's closest approach of the Sun and this does tie into very powerful earthquakes felt here on the Earth around the perihelion plus or minus three days. I have generated a chart for the last 20 years regarding the exact perihelion date plus or minus three days and significant earthquakes here on the Earth. Out of these 20 years, 13 earthquakes were registered over 6.6 .6 magnitude, 12 of them over 7 magnitude, with two of them occurring on the exact date of the perihelion seven of them occurring prior to the perihelion date and three of them after the perihelion date. Now with two significant planetary alignments taking place prior to the perihelion date, I would expect a significant earthquake to be occurring January 1 to January 3, somewhere on the Earth over seven magnitude based on this symmetry. We're now looking at January 30, 2015. Now this date is significant as the Earth-Mercury-Sun alignment takes place and this does have a long history with the New Zealand region and devastating earthquakes. This is definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor. Now this alignment coincides with another alignment. Mars, Venus and Sun will also take place in and around this time frame. So this is a dual alignment or the entire inner solar system involved in an alignment. Now this is a significant time period where I'm expecting a series of very strong earthquakes to be felt here on the Earth, specifically around the Caribbean plate where a powerful earthquake could be registered, as well as the New Zealand region involving with the Earth-Mercury-Sun alignment. We're now looking at the important lunar influences for the month. Now we have three important lunar declinations which tie into significant periods for possible earthquake threats for the New Zealand region, January 3, 18 and 31st. We have the lunar perigee taking place on the 21st of the month and lunar apogee on the 9th of the month. We're now looking at the exact overhead or longitudinal position of the Moon at the time of the lunar perigee and also lunar apogee. Lunar perigee is highlighting the East Pacific rise, so this may coincide with a strong earthquake for the region for the month of January. And the lunar apogee takes place just above the Australian region into Japan. These are the main areas of focus in terms of lunar perigee and also lunar apogee. Now focusing on the January 3rd lunar declination, not only looking at the exact Moon position at the time of the event but also the exact Sun position looking for a symmetry which may give us an idea of where this large earthquake could be. I'm expecting a strong uptick in earthquakes and a very strong earthquake possible for the New Zealand region as well, with the key emphasis being for the large earthquake around the Indian Ocean region. We're now looking at the important lunar alignments for the month. Now this is a very key month in terms of planetary alignments and it's also quite strong in terms of lunar alignments as well, with key dates highlighted January 6, 8, and through 21st and 22nd are important time frames. Now in terms of Australia and New Zealand, key dates of focus will be for Australia, January 9 and 25, and for the New Zealand region, dates of focus will be the 16th, 23rd and 29th, where the Moon opposes Saturn, and this is just prior to the Earth-Mercury-Sun alignment that takes place a day later.
And for more information, a monthly newsletter is available for upload. This is a comprehensive look of the entire month, not only featuring the earthquake threats for the month, but also for Australia and New Zealand. We also go into depth with the solar activity forecast, as well as a tropical cyclone and typhoon forecast, as well as many other features. It is worth noting that the Sun and Mercury will be within two and a half degrees of declination. And this will take place the last few days of January into the first few days of February 2015. Now we need to consider that the Sun-Earth-Mercury alignment will take place during this time frame as well. This could signal a potential for a very strong and shallow earthquake for the New Zealand mainland. This is definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor. And now for the earthquake forecast for the New Zealand region. We we'll begin the month on January 3 into January 4 with a possibility of a very strong shake here registered to 6.3 magnitude. Now data and analysis does suggest an offshore earthquake could be very possible here. Areas of focus will be Snares Island or Auckland Island. Now this area is susceptible to very large earthquakes so it's definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor. Now we need to consider that the earth will be reaching perihelion on this time frame and it's definitely a worry for very large earthquakes felt across the globe. So this is the main concern for January 3 into January 4 for a 6.3 magnitude earthquake just offshore New Zealand. Now moving forward to the 17th of January with data and analysis suggesting the top end of New Zealand could see a shake to 4.6 magnitude. Areas of focus will be Bay of Plenty, Gisborne or in Matata. Now this earthquake could be due to harmonics fairly deep in terms of depth. 60 to 100 kilometres deep is the forecast for January 17. The very next day, January 18, could see a shake to 4.9 magnitude, this time for the North Island New Zealand. Specific areas of focus will be Napier, Hawke's Bay, or further west into Lake Talbo. Now we need to consider that the maximum lunar declination takes place on this day, so a strong impulsive earthquake could be highly possible, and this is for January 18. Now moving ahead to the 23rd of January and the North Island New Zealand could see a shake registered to 4.8 magnitude and a fairly impulsive and widely felt event is highly likely. Areas of focus will be the Palmerston North, Masterton, Waipukuro or further south into Wellington. Now this could be a widely felt earthquake and impulsive and it could be felt as high north as Lake Talpo. This is definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor January 23rd and it is important to note that the moon will make its equatorial crossing the following day. And we now round off the month on the 30th of January with a key planetary alignment of Earth, Mercury, Sun featuring with key areas of focus being the Cook Strait, Wellington, Masterton or Blenheim for a possible shake to 6.5 magnitude. This is definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor. We could see seismically very active periods during January 29 throughout the end of the month, January 31st. And I'm expecting at least one earthquake registered over 6 magnitude. We do need to watch the Wellington Fault and the Wariarapa Fault as well. It could be a sizable movement here. So it's definitely a date we need to watch and monitor January 30, possibly even January 31st, 2015. In summary, the month of January could be seismically very busy. Book ending the month January 3 and 4 and also January 30 could see shakes registered in a significant zone of 6 magnitude. Definitely a time frame we need to watch and monitor and these are key dates of focus. And that concludes the New Zealand earthquake forecast for the month. Now our focus goes across the Tasman and into the Australian region and the earthquake forecast for Australia with key dates of significant celestial influence mapped geodetically and using astrocartography or locational astrology. Zones of interest this month are South Australia which should see two strong shakes this month on January 17 and 25. New South Wales would see a rare earthquake on January 3rd registered to 4.1 magnitude and this could be significant. West Australia could see a shake on the 10th of January registered to 3.8 magnitude. Moving across to the Tennant Creek region in Northern Territory on January 14 the forecast is for a 3.6 magnitude earthquake and this would be worth watching on the drums. And finally wrapping up the month January 30 the Victorian region could see a shake around 3 magnitude and this wraps up the Australian forecast for the month of January. And that concludes the Volcano and Earthquake Forecast video for the New Zealand and also the Australian regions for the month of January. Now for further videos, February through December 2015, these will be made available for members and subscribers of the SolarWatcher.net website. 
This video was made public in order to show people the content available on the website. For more information, please visit solarwatcher.net. Thanks for watching.